for billions of years, our moon has hung in the void, a silent gray sentinel orbiting the Earth. To the naked eye, it appears dead, a static landscape frozen in time where nothing ever changes and nothing ever moves. We look up at it and see a symbol of tranquility, but this tranquility is a lie. The lunar surface is actually a front line, a battered shield constantly bombarded by the debris of the solar system. It is a world of silent violence where the ground is pulverized by rocks moving faster than the fastest bullet ever fired. Most of the time, this violence happens in secret, hidden by the blinding glare of the sun or occurring on such a small scale that we never notice from our vantage point on Earth. But on December 12th, 2025, that silence was broken. At exactly 3.09 UTC, a telescope trained on the darkened lunar planes captured something extraordinary, a single brilliant spark of light. It lasted less than a second, blinking into existence and vanishing just as quickly. But that fleeting flash was the death rattle of a traveler that had been drifting through the void for eons. It was a hypervelocity impact, caught not by an automated algorithm or a post-processing review weeks later, but viewed live in real time by a human observer. This wasn't just a random collision, it was a message from the cosmos, a violent reminder that our celestial neighborhood is far more crowded and dangerous than we often like to admit. Today we are going to deconstruct this event. We are going to trace the journey of that object, understand the physics that allowed a rock the size of a pebble to detonate like a bomb and explore what this means for the future of humanity as we prepare to return to the moon, this time to stay. To understand the magnitude of what happened on December 12th, we first have to understand the environment. On Earth, we are protected. We live inside a bubble. When a space rock hits our atmosphere, the air acts as a shield, a thick fluid that absorbs the blow. Friction burns the object up, turning it into a streak of light we call a shooting star. It is a beautiful, harmless display. The energy is dissipated miles above our heads, but the moon has no such shield. It has no atmosphere to speak of, just a near-perfect vacuum. There is no air to slow an object down, no friction to burn it up before it hits the ground. There is no warning. This means that when debris strikes the moon, it does so with its full, unmitigated, kinetic energy. The object doesn't slow down until it physically touches the lunar surface. The object that struck the moon earlier this this month was likely tiny. Preliminary analysis suggests it was only a few centimeters across, perhaps no larger than a marble or a grape. On Earth, if you threw a pebble that size, it would bounce harmlessly off a wall. But in space, speed changes everything. Physics takes on a terrifying new dimension. This fragment was traveling at tens of kilometers per second. Two Put that in perspective, a high-powered rifle bullet travels at about one kilometer per second. This object was moving 30 to 40 times faster than that. When that marble struck the lunar regolith slightly northeast of the Langranus crater, it wasn't just a rock hitting dirt. It was a catastrophic energy transfer event. The object slammed into the surface so fast that the rock structure couldn't handle the shockwave. It didn't just break, it vaporized. The solid matter of the meteorite and the lunar soil instantly turned into plasma. The kinetic energy was converted in a fraction of a second into intense heat and a blinding flash of light. That flash is what the telescope in Ireland recorded. It is a terrifying thought. An object so small you wouldn't notice it in your shoe, carrying enough energy to be seen clearly across 384,000 kilometers of empty space. Space. The fact that we saw it at all is a stroke of incredible luck and timing. The impact occurred on the unilluminated portion of the moon, the night side during a new moon phase. This is the only time these observations are possible. Had this happened on the sunlit side, the glare of the lunar surface would have been millions of times brighter than the flash. It would have been washed out completely, invisible to our eyes. But against the pitch black of the lunar night, the spark stood out like a beacon. What makes this specific observation historic is the human element. Usually we find these flashes days or weeks later. Computers scan terabytes of video footage looking for anomalies and flag them for researchers to check. It's a retroactive discovery. But this time the observer was watching the feed live. They saw the violence of the universe unfold in real time. It represents the first confirmed lunar impact flash recorded from Ireland and only the second ever documented from the British Isles. It is the kind of rarity that astronomers dream of, a right place, right time moment that connects the observer directly to the mechanics of the solar system. But where did this bullet come from? We can't interview the rock, but the calendar, 
gives us a suspect. The timing of the impact offers a strong clue. It happened right in the middle of the Gemini meteor shower. Every December, Earth and the Moon plow through a stream of debris left behind by a strange object known as 3200 Phaethon. Most meteor showers come from comets, dirty snowballs that melt as they get close to the sun, leaving a trail of dust. But Phaethon is different. It's a rock comet, an asteroid that behaves like a comet shedding rocky debris rather than ice due Due to the intense thermal stress of getting too close to the sun. This means the Gemini stream is dense and the particles within it are traveling fast, around 35 kilometers per second. That matches the velocity estimates of the object that hit the moon. It is almost certain that what we witnessed was a Geminid meteoroid ending its journey. Think about the scale of that journey. This small rock was shed by an asteroid, drifted in a vast orbital stream for perhaps centuries, effectively invisible to anyone. Then out of all the empty space in the solar system, it intersected the precise orbital path of the moon at the exact second required to cause that collision. And we, a species on the planet next door, just happen to be looking. This validates something crucial for scientists. We have long theoretical models that tell us the moon should be getting hit by the same meteor showers that Earth experiences. It makes logical sense. The Earth and moon are a binary system moving through the same patches of space. But verifying that is difficult. Seeing a Gemini impact confirms our models of the debris environment. It proves that these streams of space junk are not just light shows for us on Earth. They are navigational hazards for the moon. And this brings us to the most critical part of this story, the future. We are living in an era where the moon is transitioning. It is no longer just a distant object of study. It is becoming a destination. Space agencies and private companies are actively planning permanent habitats, research stations, and mining infrastructure. We are designing suits for astronauts to walk on the surface for weeks at a time. We are talking talking about building glass-domed observation decks and solar farms. This impact is a sober, necessary warning. On Earth, a Gemini meteor is a romantic wish upon a star. On the moon, it is shrapnel. If an astronaut had been standing at the impact site near the Langrenus crater on December 12th, the result would have been catastrophic. There is no survival scenario for a direct hit, but even a near miss is dangerous. The impact throws up a cloud of ejecta, high-speed dust, and molten rock that sprays out like a shotgun blast. Even a small habitat module or a delicate solar array could be punctured or severely damaged by a kinetic strike of that magnitude. We cannot rely on an atmosphere to protect us there. We have to bring our own shields. Understanding the frequency of these impacts isn't just about satisfying scientific curiosity. It is about survival. By studying this flash, measuring its brightness, its duration, its color temperature, we can calculate the density of the object and the energy it released. Each data point helps us build a map of the risk. It helps engineers determine how thick the Kevlar and aluminum walls of a lunar habitat need to be. It helps mission planners decide if astronauts should stay indoors during the peak of the Gemini meteor shower, treating it like a heavy storm on Earth. Furthermore, these impacts act as natural excavation experiments. When the object strikes, it blasts out material from beneath the surface, exposing fresh lunar regolith to the vacuum of space for the first time in millions of years. By analyzing the light from the impact, we can sometimes even decipher the chemical composition of the soil at the crash site. It is a way of doing geology from a quarter of a million miles away without ever landing a rover. As our technology improves, these detections will become more common. We are moving toward a future of continuous lunar monitoring, where automated networks of telescopes watch the lunar night side 24-7, logging every flash, every strike, every new crater. We might even begin to see follow-up missions, where satellites already in lunar orbit are reprogrammed to fly over the coordinates of a fresh flash to photograph the new crater it left behind, giving us a complete before and after picture of the lunar geography. This event on December 12th was brief, a split second of light in the dark, but it illuminated a reality we must not ignore. The solar system is dynamic. It is active. It is evolving. The moon is not a dead painting in the sky. It is a world constantly being shaped and reshaped by the forces of the cosmos. It is a world that is still under construction. We have now proved 
proven that we can watch this process happen in real time. We have peered into the dark and seen the sparks fly. As we prepare to leave our footprints there once again, we do so with a better understanding of the environment that awaits us. A beautiful, silent, and violently active frontier where the sky itself can fall at any moment. If you want to stay updated on the latest discoveries from the lunar surface and the evolving science of our solar system, make sure you're subscribed. We are tracking these events as they happen and there is much more to uncover. Thanks for watching.